Let's use some examples with begging to further understand how it works. In these exercises, we will also have some notebooks. In our first example, we will try to understand the effect of begging in terms of overfitting. So we will first create a random data set. So in this plot, you will see these blue dots that are coming from our random data set. Then we will first fit a simple decision tree on this. Then we will have a begging method and we will compare those. Let's start with the decision tree. In this case, our decision tree has a maximum depth of eight. And we fit on this data set. We see this orange line here for the response of our tree. When we look closely, we see that we have a lot of fluctuations with this model. This fluctuations usually refer to overfitting problem. And we see that this fluctuations even become higher in the areas where we don't have too many data points. Let's see what happens when we use the begging approach here. Assume we backed 100 of these trees, again with the max depth of 8 here. And we are using this uh, bootstrapping approach here again, considering the 100% of the data in each of these bootstrap samples. In this case, when we look at the response, we see that we were able to dampen the effect of these fluctuations. So let's go back to the previous slide to see the effect. But we weren't able to reduce all this fluctuation completely. This is coming from the fact that we still have some outliers coming from our data set. When we apply this bootstrapping, as we have seen in the previous slides, we still consider the 63% of the data in each of these sample data. Because of that, we still have some outliers and that still causes some fluctuations in the response. Let's go one more step. This time, in addition to having 100 back trees, we also say that we are going to use 10% of the data in each of these trees. So for the training, we use 10% of data for each of those trees. Let's look at the response. This time, we get even smoother response, as you see here. So we further dampen this effect of fluctuations. So let's compare this to the previous ones, begging and simple decision tree. Although we were able to reduce this overfitting problem, we also reduce the variance of the model. And because of the various and bias trade-off, we actually had to increase our bias here. So as you see, this model will make uh, higher errors uh, with the predictions because of this phenomena here. Let's talk about one more example with simple begging. This time, we will have this notebook for this. In this example, we will try to see the effect of adding more and more trees to our begging method and see whether it improves the model or it just doesn't change anything. In this exercise, we fit multiple uh, begging methods with the increasing number of decision trees. So we plot them here. As you see, it goes from one to all the way 10,000. What we realize here is that after we pass about 10 to 100 trees, actually adding more trees do not change things too much. So we get a very similar response. The main reason behind this type of uh, response is that we still have some correlations between the trees coming from the bootstrap samples. One way that we can create some difference is, as we have seen before, we can just reduce the sample size. So if we just take 1% of the training data to train each of these trees, this time we will see the effect of adding more and more trees. For example, here, if we go from left to right, we will see that the response gets smoother here. 